get good grades, okay, in school, and if you get good grades, okay, and you're good at basketball, you can get a scholarship to a big school in America. And if you're one of the best players in college, and you finish your college, you know, you can go to the NBA. Smiles, great women, bays and bikinis are shining. We flying, life is good, couldn't be better timing. Chilling the coast, catching waves, getting numbers. Beautiful summer, quick to leave like a royal runner. Got it cause she's done at the way she moves. My game's smooth, never lose, some she can refuse. Hey brother, that's always on the news. Wouldn't wanna pass that, I'll take you on the cruise. Pick a destination, your sensation. Leave you on like a radio station, I'll be patient. Can't stop thinking about you and your fragrance. Got me days yeah. the way you're raising, sitting in the shade. And you find self hot like the sun. Make my heart melt, you're my boo. Got me stuck like glue. Best thing about summer has to be you, yep. Uh, I'm Dom Dewam. Skirtis Dom. I'm Ann Kier. I'm joking, yeah. My name's Joe. Robbie. Robbie Tiger. I'm Marco Cho. Uh, I'm Bolas Madut. I'm Cho Gat. Uh, my name is Maluka Dud. I play for Law Horse. I'm a 6'2 point guy. Best shooter ever come out of Law Horse. Period. Came out me. Hi, my name is Bo. I'm class of 17. I'm point guard. Number one point guard in the country. All right, no. <laughs> I think I dunked on him twice. Twice or three. He flute it though. Flute, yeah. He flute it though. He's Lisa. I was born in Khartoum, Sudan. Sudan. Uh, I came to Australia in 2003. I played for Longhorns basketball on the 20s. Longhorns basketball club. And I played for Longhorns on the 18s. For Longhorns. Hey, hey, hey. You know, class of 2019, only 15 years old, 6'6". Six, six. I'm a god, crazy handle, can duck, left hand, right hand, I can do anything. My name is Manyang Beberi, or as many people know me as many. We had our first training session on the 15th of February 2003 in this facility, so that became the foundation date for the club. I started the club pretty much with a couple of mites. When we first started, we just, we just wanted to play basketball. I didn't know it was going to, to be something bigger over time. Longhorns Basketball Club is a domestic basketball club based out of you know, the western suburbs of Melbourne. And you know, there's a high um, population here of migrant refugee background kids. So a lot of you know South Sudanese Australian kids, you know, other Eastern African backgrounds as well. But um, you know increasingly we're finding a lot of the kids are actually born in Australia to, you know, parents who may have come over here. It's interesting, it is very, very multicultural and that's what we love about it. We're all Aussies. It's just a really, really nice mix of, uh, of kids and, and backgrounds that we all get along with. It's great. significant for a club so small and I mean that you know in with as much respect as, as uh, possible 
providing really at least you know two or three players that may go on to the NBA that may go on and represent Australia who already are representing Australia at the national level you know in a few years time where half the boomers team is is from a multicultural background really the stories of well, okay where did they start you know where did they learn their fundamentals what was their first experience of basketball I think the name Longhorns this club here the Longhorns basketball club that name will keep coming up time and time again <laughs> Manyang was my, is, is a really close friend to me, he's, uh, he's my uncle. Um, he came one time to my house at, uh, around 2006, 2007, uh, and he, he, he invited me down to training. My brother used to play for Longhorns, right? And one of the coaches came to my house, he was dropping my brother off at home, and he saw me and he said I was pretty tall. So he wanted me to come play with Longhorns, and you know, I went to the practices and that's how it all started. Uh, I used to stay at home, doing nothing, and ever since I started playing basketball, I started being active and it changed my life in a big way. My oldest brother was here when Manyang started Longhorns. My second oldest brother as well played, so it was pretty much a family thing. So. The, the coach is my uncle, so he, he got me to play. Yeah. Manyang came and picked me up. Like, he told me, you want to play basketball? I was like, yeah, why not? I want to give it a try. As soon as you get frustration in your mind, now you're worried about the rest, you're worried about, you know, then you're not playing. Sometimes you just gotta forget about the rest. I don't care, you get fouled 10 times. Don't, don't worry when about it. When me and my mice were playing at the start, you know, we thought, okay, well, let's start to involve some of the young guys and start getting into coaching. Just recruit the young guys, keep them off the street. But pretty much the idea behind it was to get them involved engage in sport and keep them busy and um, involve in the local community where you know it's good for integration and also at the same time it's good you know for kids to develop their leadership skills develop their confidence understand how a cohesive team works you know physical and mental health you know there's so many good things that come out of playing sports so these were some of the things that were the motivating factor behind you know like um, starting Longhorns and continuing Longhorns and developing a junior program I want you to be behind him. And punch fouls, I want you to put your hand up. Yes. Take, take the foul. Yes, because you. if he gets fouled out, that's going to be bad. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Get out to the three. I'm on three. I'm on three. Hey, who wants to take it? I ain't got to take it. take it to the hook. Yeah. I'm going to get a strong drive. Yeah, strong. Yeah. Strong. And don't hesitate on the shot. Every one of you. All right? Okay, yeah, hit them. Hit them up. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. All right, let's go. 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 One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, championship. How about two, three, four? One, two, three, four. My name's Eli Tom. I'm in your 10 right now, and I'm a 6 1 basketball player. We left Sudan when we were young. We went to New Zealand, stayed there for about 12 years, and we moved to Australia. My mom supports me a lot. She's paying for everything. She drops me off to games. 
She is the one who brings the food home and everything. She just wants me to be happy and follow my dreams. Through Longhorns basketball, I've been given a good opportunity. I played the South Sudanese tournament. I had a mixtape done, and through that, a coach had contacted me. And with that, uh, soon I'll be flying over just to play basketball at a high school level. Through that, I hope to get a D1 college, study, play basketball, and then make it to the NBA. In Australia, it's harder to make it because the money is a problem, getting notice is a problem. In America, you get noticed more easily with the AAU tournaments, the high school tournaments, and coaches knowing a lot of other people. We don't have those kind of contacts over here. When I joined Longhorns, I had to work harder since there was better competition, which made me work harder and I got better real quick. I've seen old Longhorns players and seeing where they're at there inspires me. It makes me believe that I can do what they did. Okay, let's go. Hands in, yeah? Hands in, everybody, yeah? Hard work on three. One, two, three. Hard work. Hard work. There's been some real great success stories, so Mango Mathiang is uh, over, over in um, the States at uh, Louisville playing Division One basketball and who knows, look, you know, a professional career in basketball probably awaits that, uh, that young man. Mango Mathia is called Mango, uh, he's a starting setter at Louisville University. We had him here, you know, playing juniors with us and he was training with us. He went there in 2010 to the States, there's a coach there that I know, so I sent him over there. We got Mango, Manny Malou, shout out to Manny Malou. You know, them two guys, that's what we all look up to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like Malou and Mango, they came down to training, they gave us speeches, they told us what it's like over there. And you know, with them being so high, highly ranked and highly known in basketball, it's you know great to, for us to know that we can be like that one day, because Mango grew up around this area, he was in the same gym as us. So if he can make it, why can't I make it? Uh, Ding Santo. Dang Santo. Dang over in Baylor, again a Division One school doing some big things. Kwani. Kwani Kwani. Kwani Kwani. The other player we have that played juniors here is, is Kwani Kwani. Uh, he's at uh, Chaminade University in Hawaii. Dang Adel. Dang Adel. Dang Adel. Dang Adel. Yeah, Dang Adel. And then we have Dang Adel. Future NBA prospect is, um, is the talk in America. He's about to join. Mango at um, Louisville. Two players from Australia, from the same club here in Australia, have been able to go to you know a big college like that and get a scholarship. We're really, really excited about that. Like there was no doubt about his talent. He could play. Like the scholarship started falling through. He, he had a lot of scholarships. He was he got invited to camps. He went there ready. That's that's what you gotta focus on when you leave this place. You gotta go there ready to dominate. The number one thing is to get your degree. You know, being in the States, you're not gonna get on the court if you don't have a good GPA. If it's not a 4.0, 3.5, you're not gonna play. It's a, it's a little hard, you know, being in, being in Australia, but you can still get the attention. This is through YouTube and recording your personal workouts, recording your game, you know, your highlights, putting them together, putting them on YouTube, and then if you really want to go to that school or you want interest, write the coaches an email, put up your stats, talk about yourself. It takes hard work and talent to get a scholarship. With social media these days and YouTube, people are able to put footage on the internet and it, it goes everywhere, you know, and everyone can see it. We have uh, two national tournaments that we do every year. Teams come from uh, different states. So the tournaments are quite competitive and the coaches there in America, they see that there's the talent here. They're able to contact us and ask about certain kids. It usually starts with one kid, you know, um, those players, when they do well over there, they're able to get themselves a good reputation and the coaches ask about the kids that are here in, um, in Australia. So, and you know, we send them the footage of some of the players that are playing here and that's how the interest comes along. What you gotta do is just be consistent, all right? 
Be consistent with training. Don't miss a game. Don't miss a training session. Okay? Well, you have to be you have to be at least one of the best junior players here. You have to be you know, you have to be really, really good and it also depends it depends on the junior college also or the high school in America and what sort of player they want. Do they want a guard? Do they want a um, a tall player, center? The kids that are tall and, and fast, uh, you know, they get the scholarship much easier. But that doesn't mean that if you're a guard, you can't get a scholarship. If you're a guard, you know, you just have to be able to shoot the ball really, really well. You know, I tell my players, shoot the ball like Steph Curry and you will be fine. You know, obviously, he, you know, Steph Curry is on a different level, but if they can, they can work on their shooting, where they shoot the ball consistently and accurately. Um, it doesn't matter how tall you are, you know, like if you can put that ball in the basket efficiently, you know, schools are going to look at you. You work hard, you know, you got a bit of athletic ability and you can, you can run the floor, you can shoot the ball well, you can handle the ball a bit. Those things are really, really important. And then you add in all the work ethic and polish up all your other weaknesses. Over the years, you know, you should get better as a basketball player. So I think we're excited about Wally. He's, he's going he's gonna to do well. Young guys that uh, you know always rock up to practice, always work hard, stay in school. You know that's a must. School's first. Stay dedicated, work hard, and listen to what my young says and take good advice. Don't just blindly follow what he says, but think about what he says because he knows what he's doing. Look at the plays he's produced. Everything is bigger than basketball. Basketball is just a platform for life. But for these younger kids, they should really look up to us and they should see the mistakes that we're making right now and not make, well, not make those same mistakes. So just working out at home, listening to Mignon, listening to your parents and, you know, at school, especially school. Because Mignon's trying to make some moves, he's gonna kick us out of the club if we ain't doing good at school, so. School's a big factor. Um, get to training on time, get to your games one hour before the games, and yeah, just get better as a player and, um, and as a person.
Uh, you got me up and coming, you know. You got, you know, Mayan and Gilgis who play for Victory Rock. They're real, they're real good. They're, gonna, they're probably going to make the league. Young players that are still at the high school level, you know, a good number of them. We've got Mayan here, big kid, still in the high school level in uh, Florida. A lot of colleges are looking at him now. We've got Maduta Ketch that is really doing well at uh, high school level. Gerges Dow is doing well as well. And then we've got some young guys that are here that will be going to college like Bullback and, and a few other young guys that are also really good. There's some a few youngsters coming up. Junior. You know, it's pretty exciting and I think it's only going to increase in the future and it's, it's great seeing these kids grow up and, and get the opportunities. And for a lot of these kids, they're the first people in their families to go to university and it's because of basketball. Now, that's Longhorns. Longhorns gave them that opportunity and, and they, they ran with it and, and made something of it. So it's pretty special and it's only going to, to get bigger in the future. Young guys now, you know, called Kwani Kwani. He just got an interest from the AIS. He just turned 15. He's about six foot six, very athletic. Come on, Kwani. I'm Kwani Kwani. Then Kwani is my older brother. I'm 15 years old, and I've been playing for Longhorns basketball since I was 10 years old. My name is Dan Kwani. Been a member of Lawns for about eight to nine years now. I played last year down in Western Nebraska, but I'm heading to Miles Community College this coming season. My earliest memory is like just being stuck inside the house sometimes and wanting something else to do. And I see Dan playing basketball, so I wanted to join as well. Since I have a brother who's been through all this, he can tell me about like everything that he's done and how to like do better than that. My next step is to play high school in America because I think it's the best op opportunity for me and for me to step up my game there. Kwani obviously has uh, a little bit more opportunities than I have growing up because he has seen me take those same steps he wants to take. So now it's just a matter of him like taking those similar steps but a step further. I mean, he's getting looks right now from like high schools and they're really interested in him and they're trying to get him over there. So the best thing that Kwani could do is just continue to be humble and just work hard every day because that's, that's one thing I've been preaching to him since he started playing basketball. 
And if you want to succeed in basketball on the court or anywhere, you cannot do that without the schoolwork first. When you go to the state, the schoolwork is always going to come first. It's nothing easy down there, so it's just a matter of um, staying composed and just just continue to work hard and try to be the best person, not just a player, but the best person you can be. Making sure you get to class on time, get to practice on time. I've had a little conversation about things like that with him, so I expect him to know what's kind of coming his way, you know. Longhorns has meant so much to me, like uh, I had changed the outcome of my life in so many ways. Um, a great influence to our community because uh, I've seen so many young kids that could have been just down at the station, but instead they're inside this gym right now. And they're in here to, you know, just work hard. They're spending their spare time doing something positive for themselves. Getting a proper education is really, really important because, uh, and that's one of the things that we emphasize at Longhorns Basketball Club. The, the opportunities at the top are limited and the best of the best is the one that's going to get them. You have to have your education go in line with your sport because you never know what's going to happen with sport. Considering the places I grew up, I've always felt that I've had to negotiate space between my continental roots and like, um, I guess, diasporic upbringing. And for me personally, faith has always been my refuge and sports have always been my expression. So it's kind of like where I find my solitude. And um, before I got injured while I was still in New Zealand, I played, like I devoted myself to sport and like I thought, you know, I was chasing the dream and I thought sport was my ticket out of everything. But like one thing that I feel like I failed to realize and recognize back then was sport was only a vehicle and basketball should have been a vehicle I used, not like not like everything that I put completely my my being into. And with that being said, I think like one of the key things I learned was it's important to chase a dream but not forget yourself along the way. And along the way I got injured and I took it real hard. I stopped playing for like three years. I guess for me, the best advice I could give is to train not just your body, but train your mind and give yourself options. Let basketball be a weapon and let it be a tool that you use to better yourself and farther yourself in your career, but don't let it be your end or be or It's only a part of who you are as a person and it's only a part of your journey. And it's only, you can only grasp it for so long, you can never hold it. So I guess practice all your other abilities, train yourself mentally and just allow yourself to be all that you can be in your fullest potential. I'm my mom. My mom works three jobs. She inspires me to do, to do great, to be good in school, to be good at basketball, to do, to do well in life. Shout out to Coach Mignon. Without him, I wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be out. You wouldn't be known as Longhorns. I wouldn't be the basketball player that I am today. Shout out to my boys, obviously, my family over here at Longhorns. Shout out to my mom. Of course, I gotta shout out my mom. My mom inspires, inspires me because, you know, she means everything a lot. She, me and her have been doing a lot together and, you know, she always gets me motivated and she keeps me going every day, you know, become better. Uh, my parents are the Mamoru Morus, they inspire me um, each and every day. Uh, as long, they've been hard on me since, ever since I was a little kid, but then uh, it's a soul for a reason, so they're my, they're my biggest role models for me. Uh, I was inspired by my family. They always wanted me to be like the best I could be. And since I started liking basketball, I just wanted to be the best. The AM, yeah, I better understand. I be the last man to stand with the mic in my hand like the sun. You know that I shine. Hands up, yo, cause it's summertime. Chilling in the summertime, hanging out. We stay up all night, and that's with that. The name Longhorn comes from the Longhorn cattle that we keep in South Sudan. Cattle in Africa are really, really central to the livelihoods of, uh, of the community. Our ancestors in South Sudan were mainly pastoralists. A long time ago, people used to butter trade. If you didn't have uh, grain or corn, 
you would go and, and say, okay, I've got this cow, you know, like uh, I'll exchange it for five, five sacks of grain or, or, or corn, you know. In Africa, we call them the, the zebu cattle and um, they've got really long horns, so that's where the, the name long horns comes from. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. Long horns. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Win, win, no All right, okay, so, so one, two, three, four.